Hey guys, Archangel Manga here, and today's review is going to be the manga of Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind by critically acclaimed Studio Ghibli director Hayao Miyazaki. Now, before we get into the main meat of the review, it's important to know that the world in which uh, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind is set in, you know, the geography of the locations, everything about this is it, it's a crucial element to understanding the story and you know, really understanding like where the characters are and what exactly is taking place. So, as a brief backstory to the setting of Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, um, it's set in a world 1,000 years um, in the future, um, after like a cataclysmic war um, almost brought humanity to the brink of extinction. Um, the war and the purpose of it is long forgotten, you know, all the records of it have, you know, pretty much died. You know, they refer to the end of the world as the seven days of fire and all that remains of it is a polluted land um, and, you know, uh, massive um, like robot constructs um, that are basically just melded with the environment. You know, they've, they've long been deactivated or, you know, been destroyed and you just, you, you see tiny little glimpses, you know, and, you know, tiny little remnants of the old world. Um, the continent on which, you know, the continent in which Nausicaa is set in, um, the available land that's, you know, for human use is greatly limited, um, as most of the continent has been engulfed by a sea of corruption, which is a giant forest, um, but not like a regular forest, you know, where normal, you know, uh, flora and fauna, you know, thrive it's a poisonous forest you know if if humans enter the the lungs will pretty much implode and they'll, they'll just cough up blood instantly um as you can see in the front cover the forest is inhabited by giant insects which you know um are very quick to anger um so it's it's understandable from the get-go that the world that nausicaa is saying is vastly different from the present world that we live in and it's a very, very, very harsh environment for, for people. Um, humanity is literally just in the, the tens of thousands um, due to the pollution and, you know, the radiation and everything. You know, people are, you know, slowly becoming infertile. Um, you know, babies are like born dead, you know, frequently. And the, the population is slowly and slowly decreasing. Um, so that's basically the setting of where it is. Um, now, Princess Nausicaa herself takes the helm of this series relatively quick, pretty much from the get-go. Um, where she lives, she lives in the Valley of the Wind, which is uh, a small region on like the fringes of uh, the continent, which is protected by the sea wind blowing inward to keep the, the, um, the sea of corruption spores, because basically the sea of corruption is slowly growing and it, it basically it releases spores, you know, onto the um, the available you know, human land in order to expand. So the Valley of the Wind is protected from the winds that blow the spores back into the Sea of Corruption. Um, and she's less of a princess. She's more like just the chieftain's daughter. Um, the na the nation, I guess you could say, where she lives is you know a tiny. <laughs> it's, it's like literally like five hundred people you know, that comprise the Valley of the Wind. Um, and she's like the only surviving daughter of 11 siblings because all her other brothers and sisters were stillborn. Um, she, she's on like her own personal quest um, to try and basically understand what the Sea of Corruption is and why it came to be. Um, she, she's got a real kind spirited nature she gets on, along very well um with animals and she, she she's she's almost you know the opposite to what everybody else is everybody else curses their fate and the sea of corruption but she favors more understanding um she has a very uh loving um attitude towards the forest insects and sees that they have a soul um so she, you know, we understand from the get-go that she's a very loving, compassionate character. Um, and basically, it's probably best to just explain the story. Um, there's two 
major factions in the world that she lives in, um, the Toromekian Empire and uh, the Doric Empire. And these two factions are basically gripped in war, um, basically to fight over the last available resources you know that humanity has because the continent is slowly being eroded by the sea of corruption so you know humanity is basically being pushed off you know so you know tensions are very very high and the Toromekian Empire um, has all treaties with like autonomous regions you know um, in like the north of the continent and the valley of the wind is one of those autonomous regions you know they're bound by ancient treaties to basically aid the Toromekian Empire should they ever go to war so um, the war, you know, kicks off relatively fast. Um, anybody who's available um, in the Valley of the Wind, you know, is, is called to arms. But from the Valley of the Wind, you know, it's only really Nausicaa and some of her mentors um, that join the conflict. The most important thing that's highlighted throughout this entire series is the impact of war on not only the two nations that are fighting against each other, but, you know, on the the people involved, you know, the the the, the peasants, you know, the common folk, um, the soldiers, you know, the front linesmen, you know, there's not really any focus on, you know, the generals and, you know, the the hierarchy, you know, the, the focus is really on the people who are suffering and, you know, experiencing the war first hand. You know, there's Many a times throughout the series where we get to see refugee ships being completely blown to smithereens and, you know, bodies falling out of the, you know, falling ships and it's, it, it, the, the devastation, uh, you know, over the loss of human life, you know, human life wasted is something that's very, very heavily highlighted throughout this series and Miyazaki does a really good job of, you know, demonstrating how human life is just wasted and, you know, taken on a whim just for, you know, people's greed essentially because the entire world has been destroyed uh, due mainly to humanity's selfishness and um, Nausicaa is really conflicted and coming to terms with the fact that she's got a love for human life but she also acknowledges the fact that it's humankind themselves that have basically brought themselves to you know this position and you know she she's she, she's very empathetic towards towards people on both sides you know she she resents having to fight a war that is in essence destroying what's left of human life and you know she she, she finds herself repeatedly trying to, to to help people and you know finding herself that finding herself in positions where she just she, she literally cannot do anything and she can't stop people from dying and you know it, it's, it's really it's really emotionally impactful it's a very powerful series and it really gets you gripped um there's, there's a lot of really interesting characters as well you know not Zika included um her relationship with these giant insects called um the omu um these giant like big massive beetles that uh reside in the forest and she, she finds herself trying to justify humankind to them because she, she can communicate with them telepathically um and they, they share some kind of mutual bond, you know, Nausicaa is revealed to be some kind of child of prophecy that will bring stability to the world at one point. Um, and that's not necessarily a spoiler, that's, you know, a theme that's, it, it, it's ongoing throughout the entire story. Um, so Nausicaa has, has these, this mutual bond with the forest and the insects, and she's trying to bring understanding between the human world and the insect world, but really to her you know detriment because she's still gripped in this conflict and this war between the two fighting nations which are you know fighting over the dwindling dwindling resources um so yeah we have nausicaa um and then we have uh princess kushana who is the um daughter of the vi emperor who's the emperor of toromekia um the um the kingdom in the north of the continent and kushana um I found her personally to be to be the most interesting character of the series. Um, she has a lot more emotional depth. Um, I found her to have 
a lot more. She 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 was, even though she's not the main character, she's a support character. Um, she's actually got the most character development in all of the characters in the series. I thought um, she's got a very very interesting backstory. Um, when she shows up, she shows up as an enemy. Um, I believe in the anime, the original nineteen eighty four film, she was actually the main antagonist. But in this, she's actually um, she, she's like the the arbitrator. She just kind of. Um, she, she's like almost a neutral party. She's just kind of doing everything for her own gain. Um, you know, she even though she's the daughter of the Vi Emperor, um, she she hates her own family. You know, her like the royalty that she comes from. Um, they're the kind of people who stab each other in the back. You know, in order to you know kind of get the throne. You know, her, she's got two bro. She got three brothers actually, who are also on the front lines. Who are basically trying to plot against her and. Um, you know, trying to kill her whilst also trying to overthrow their own father on the throne. Um, so she comes from a very conflicted, dysfunctional family as it is. But yet her troops, uh, you know, the, the soldiers that she commands directly, who she's trained directly, you know, they, they she commands utmost respect from them and they respect her so brilliantly. You know, she's an excellent, fantastic leader. You know, her her, her soldiers will literally die for her. Um, and she's in essence, you know, really the the true heir to the throne because you know we get to see through time and time again that you know she she's cold hearted, you know, at one point, but then you know she shows like dignified compassion, and you know she's she's very strong, you know she's very 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 strong female character, and you know I, I thought that was very commendable of Hayao Miyazaki to put a very strong female character in uh, in the series. Now the original. Um, Format that Nosgrad, the Valley of the Wind, was released in was a re it was a re released in uh, in seven books. Um, but for this version, um, they released it in two two volumes, like so. Um, the first volume really deals with um, the Toromekian armies advance south in order to conquer like the Doric principalities because the both of the kingdoms, the Doric kingdom and the Toromekian kingdom, are set out relatively the same. Like you have the the main bulk of like. Um, the kingdom, um, like the capital, and you know, like all the castles and everything like that. But then you have like um, like autonomous principalities, like you know, autonomous states that function independently, but still are bound by ancient treaties to you know the capital and the Doric, uh, the Doric and Tormek in, um kingdoms. Pretty much, I set set exactly the same. So, um, the Tormekin army basically moves by you know by just conquest, um, taking over you know one one region after the next uh, and kind of pushing south in order to get to the to the, the Doric capital which is like way down in the south so that's what volume one mostly deals with and uh, you know it, it it's not really in this volume we see most of the um, the fight with Kushana um, we see a lot of like really cool scenes with Kushana in this volume but it's really in the second volume that um, Nausicaa taps into her spiritual side um, and becomes more in touch with like her telekinesis and you know the fights mostly like mental battles with you know some of the other adversaries that she faces who also have telekinetic abilities um, some of the antagonists in this like uh, the Doric Emperor's brother uh, Miralupa who is um, an extremely powerful telekinetic um, See down in the south in um, in the Doric, it's rumored that um, that there are secrets to the old technologies that existed in the old world before the Seven Days of Fire. So they have access to like you know other things that the Tormekian, um, uh you know generals do not. Um, so the Vi not the Vi Emperor um, the to the Doric Emperor and uh, his brother um, have you know certain. You know they have like scientists and labs, and you know that they're able to like extend the life and use telekinetic abilities and things like that. And Miralupa um, can uh, basically, I guess you could like call it performing astral projection, where his soul will leave his body and try and search for Nausicaa, um, you know, and tr basically try and take her soul or you know, um, like uh, take over her body. Um, so in the second volume, we see a lot of. Nausicaa's you know powers which is really interesting because it, it kind of removes um, removes the fight from you know the, the front lines um, but 
all in all, I really enjoyed it. Um, and it is an absolutely fantastic epic, but there are certain negatives, negative attributes to the series, you know, things that I didn't necessarily enjoy, and that's Hayao Miyazaki's, you know, he, he gets bogged down by world building so much, and he depicts like every little fight with every little character, you know, the, the real nitty gritty of the war, which, you know, I understand what he was, you know, wanting to achieve. He really wanted to, you know, completely open up this world and, you know, show every little detail of the war, but it's difficult sometimes to keep up with what's exactly is going on because it's 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 essential to know um to you know understand the geography and you know all the locations um in this series because it is it's very um location specific so because it's so heavy on the world building you know i found that i could get kind of lost with like what exactly was going on you know where exactly they were what you know this character's particular goal is you know where they're actually going you know things like that and because some of the the panels are like very very cramped together and there's you know th there could be a lot happening in one panel you know when there's like a battle scene going on it's you know sometimes quite hard to kind of distinguish like what characters who you know what exactly is going on and you know you sometimes really have to like stress your eyes to really understand the scene so that's something that i found you know that's kind of put me off you know certain aspects of the manga um because because it's so heavy on the world building you know the pacing can seem really slow at times and I found myself just kind of getting bored. Um, so I put it down like once, you know, a few times, you know, to kind of like reconfigure and, you know, kind of sum up what had actually gone on. Um, so that's really the only gripe I have about the series. You know, I would definitely, definitely recommend it. Um, it, it is a, a stunning, stunning series. And the presentation by Viz is like really good. Um, the only kind of gripe about the actual presentation of it is that the, some of the pages um, are quite thin and you can get like page bleeding um, where you know the panels will show through onto the next page so you know that that kind of you know made it a bit iffy but you get some really cool colour pages um, in the start of the book um, you know some just basically might me as like a showcase and his excellent art style you know it's undeniable that um, Miyazaki is an excellent artist. So another good thing as well, it comes with maps, world maps, and information on like you know, you know what's happening with the armies and where you know basically like a because this is volume two. Um, this map here is like kind of a recap um, of what's really gone down in the previous volume. You know, like where the armies are. Um, in fact, this is actually um, an event uh, which I won't spoil, which happens um, to do with the forest insects. Um, it's, there's a world map uh, in the first volume with some really nice colour pages. Uh, let's see if I can just find it real quick. Here we go. So that really gives you a, a really good idea of, um, you know, what locations are where, um, where exactly they're going. You know, the kind of he's really he's really thought of it. You know, on like a, a military level. You know, he's really. You know, employed a lot of military strategy into this series, and you know, it really shows when you see maps like this. It really helps. Like I, I, I found myself constantly going back um, to this map and just kind of, you know, remind myself of different locations and kind of like really following the story. You can follow the story with this map. So I really appreciate that they put this in, because um, it really helps. <laughs> really, really helps. Um, all in all, I would probably give this series a, a nine out of ten. Um, a solid nine out of ten. Um, it's heralded as one of the greatest mangas ever ever written um, on Anime News Network. I think it's voted number three of the all-time best mangas. Um, so you know it is definitely definitely a must-get. Whether you get the collector's edition, uh, the hardback, or the um, the individual uh, seven softback uh, covers, you know you're investing in something that is is part of manga history. Um, it's from an acclaimed director, you know, who is renownedly known internationally as an excellent story writer, so you know you're in for a treat. And on a final note, um, if you've seen the 1984 anime, um, you know, the motion picture of this, then you definitely need to read this because the motion picture doesn't even cover half of the story. You know, if you want the entire story, then read this because there is so much more to get uh, out of this than watching the film.
um, you know, there's so much more stories, so many more characters, because that's just, there's, there's a vast plethora of characters in this, you know, on both sides of, uh, you know, the, the factions. So, um, yeah, uh, again, I highly recommend this series to anybody. Um, it is definitely one of my favourite series of all time now, after reading it. I absolutely love it, even though the pacing can, you know, kind of kill the story, you know, at certain little times. But, you know, that's not something that, you know, if if, if the pacing was a little bit faster, it would have definitely been a 10, as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, um, I'm Archangel Manga, and I'm signing out.